This is a Fox 5 and Hot 97 special edition of Street Soldiers. 50 years of hip-hop with Lisa Evers. I'm so glad you're joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on Hip Hop's Bronx Roots. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. We are celebrating five decades of hip hop and its growth from the most under-resourced communities in the United States to where it is now, one of the most popular music genres in the world. It's also a vibrant international culture and a multi-billion dollar global industry that's creating life-changing opportunities for many. You can debate about who the greatest hip-hop artists are, but there's no debate about where it all started. In the Bronx, in an era when predominantly black and brown urban communities were neglected, and young people had to find their own creative outlets. It captivated a Bronx teen who became an electrifying DJ and entertainer known as Kid Capri. It, it was the voice of the street. It was something brand new. It was like a hobby at first. We didn't see no money in it. You know what I'm saying? We were just having fun. And then when we seen the money, that's when we knew it was something that was going to be here. And, and, and that's what kept me there. The Bronx launched many great artists, DJs, and styles of dance, graffiti, and clothing, all coming out of a time and place where living conditions were harsh and negative influences everywhere. AllHipHop.com CEO Chuck Creekmer has played a pivotal role in documenting hip-hop's incredible journey. To know that this rich culture that fused together several elements into one culture um, started there and then became like a virus across the whole world and um, a positive virus, I might add, you know, one that was based on fun, uh, unity, you know, uh, love. In honor of the 50th anniversary of hip hop, the Universal Hip Hop Museum in the Bronx is sponsoring a year long series of events and displays in its pop up exhibition space. Ground has been broken for the permanent museum, but construction won't be fully completed until late 2024. It's been a labor of love more than a decade in the making for executive director Rocky Bucano. The vision is to create a permanent home that celebrates all of hip hop. All of the, all of the uh, different elements, not just the music that people hear on the radio. Let's get into this with our special panel. Joining me for this conversation, Rocky Buchano. He's the executive director of the Universal Hip Hop Museum. Rocky, great to have you with us. Glad to be here. Thank you so much. Also with us, the one and only Kid Capri, the world's greatest party rocker. And uh, he's got a new album out called The Love. Kid Capri, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Lee. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Also with us is Chuck Creekmore. He's the CEO and founder of allhiphop.com. Chuck, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Um, great to have you. Chuck, what is it about the Bronx or what was it about the Bronx that you think gave it, made it a fertile ground for hip hop to grow and take root? You know, and I've said this before, I think that the Bronx uh, was a special um, gumbo of all types of circumstances in the country, in that you know in new york city and um and the response to those situations created the culture and uh for me i'm you know i'm just like a kid in a candy shop when it comes to hip-hop in general but the bronx has a special place in my heart because that's where it all started and that's where for me you know some of the best uh artists uh, as well as you know not only just hip-hop artists rappers re meaning but you know, artists, period, came out of the Bronx. Some of them didn't get the credit that they deserve because some of them predated um, the, the records, some of them predated even the media and things of that sort. But right now with hip hop turning 50, we're all taking a look back and really uh, uplifting all of the icons that came out of the Bronx and, and um, New York City. No, definitely. Kid Capri, world's greatest party rocker. Tell us about the what it was like for you getting started. Like, how did you just even get started in this back in the day? When I started, I was a real young kid, and I seen somebody playing dice, a guy named Joe playing dice on my block, and he kept going, yes, yes, y'all, throwing the dice to the beach, y'all. And I'm looking, I'm saying, what does he mean, yes, yes, y'all, to the beach, y'all? He kept saying this little rap. So that, that Friday, I went to a party in the community center, I seen a guy named DJ B-Ward playing. And I was stuck. I was just amazed. I didn't go to the bathroom. I ain't dance, no girls. I ain't do nothing. I just watched this guy. And I ran home, told my mother I wanted to be a DJ. She didn't know what I was talking about. At the time, we didn't have a whole lot of money. So she bought me a little tape deck and a mixer that had no headphone hole. 
So when I got this mixer, I had to guess all the spots on the records because I had no way of listening to it. And that's what made me better than all the older dudes in the in the neighborhood. So that was my introduction right there. And I never looked back. I never said I'm going to uh, have another job to fall back on. My mindset was I'm going to make it. That's it. And you and you and you have made it and you keep making it, which is really wonderful. We're going to find out about that in just a moment. Ro Rocky, there was talk for years about a hip hop museum and it took it took a lot of there were a lot of false starts, a lot of different uh, groups and entities trying to get the whole thing uh, together. Tell us about what you did to make this work and make this a reality uh, right now. You know, I, I didn't really do anything truly special. It was just I, I think it was you know, a combination of all my different skill sets that uh, allowed me to kind of like navigate the different terrains to, you know, to really make uh, a development of a museum even possible. You know, people don't really understand how difficult it is to get a project like this started. And, you know, it takes it takes a lot of perseverance. You know, it, it, it just doesn't happen overnight. Uh, we've been working on this project for 13 years. And in the very beginning, no, no one really wanted to know anything about a hip hop museum. And I think partly the, the reason for that was because hip hop, as you already know, is, is turning 50. So it's still very young. And 13 years ago, it was even younger. Right. And, you know, people was like, what do you need a, a museum for? You know, hip hop is not even old, you know, so, you know, uh, but, you know, when I explained the vision and, and that it's all about preserving everyone's legacies and their contribution, it, it took a minute for, you know, for it to sink in, but we finally got it here and, you know, no disrespect to all the, you know, other organizations that tried to establish a, a hip hop museum. It, it takes, it takes a certain kind of uh, business acumen. In order well, and also you've been involved in entertainment too and the radio business and, and had seen a lot of it firsthand. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Chuck, when you, when you, when you look at this 50th anniversary and you look at just where it, it wasn't that long ago that hip hop was really not taken that seriously, except by people in the culture who really, really loved it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a uh, it's really a testament to the intestinal fortitude that hip hop has, you know, just to keep going. I mean, it really just started. The tone was set definitely in the Bronx, you know, where you don't give up, you don't stop, you keep going. Even the peace, love, unity, and 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 having fun aspect of it, you know, all of that was uh, set right there in the Bronx. But for for it to continue on uh, for fifty years after being dismissed as a fad being written off as just, you know, a non-art, people calling it garbage, trying to just put it down, you know, for us to come through, dominate, just, and 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 make sampling an art and make, you know, poetry an art, you know, even graffiti, it's an art now, it's res respected as an art. That was all hip hop, no pun intended, but it wasn't um, respected until we forced it. And if you know anything about respect, it's really never given. It's it's almost always taken, and that's what we do. You know, that's how we do it. And um, I appreciate it. It's given me a life that I dreamed of a uh, really a really long time ago, and not figuring out what I wanted to be. Kid Capri, give us a sense of when you were starting out, because like the party atmosphere. I think that's one of the things too. Like people, you know, people really um, need to understand like that that party atmosphere on the streets. It's like we feel like, wait a minute, okay, there was a party on every block. There were these great big, you know, there, there were these battles. What what was it like for you when you the first time you were performing out there, you know, at the community center at a street corner? Tell us about some of your first times. Um, being up there and having attention for people to stop what they're doing and watching you. That's the blessing within the self. Um, I watch people get on stages and people have their back turned and they'll be on their phone or do whatever they're doing. So to be able to have that attention and grab that and sustain it, it's a blessing. It's something I don't, I don't take for granted. You know, I wake up every day thanking God for it to be here as long as I have and still stay as relevant as I have from doing that. Um, no, I'm doing the right thing, but I, I've seen a lot of people come and go. So it, hip hop is, um, is one is, 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 is the one genre of music that once they turn their back on you is over so you have to stay <laughs> on top of your game 
You know, um, yeah. it, it's definitely a challenge to, to be in it. But once you, once they love you and they have your back, you can be here forever and do your thing and, and create opportunities for other people. That's what's important, to be able to create opportunities for other people and, and, um, and not expect anything from it, but just the satisfaction of knowing that people are living their lives from something that you created or something that you could plug them into and they could go on and be able to do something with their lives. Rocky, in terms of the museum, there give us a sense of of where it's at because I know there's exhibits open, but the the official actual permanent building is not open yet. Is that right? Yeah, the the uh, official museum doesn't open until the end of 2024. We we have a beautiful exhibit open that's called the Revolution of Hip Hop, which is located at the Bronx Terminal Market, and it's a sneak preview of what what's to come at the future museum. So. People are very excited. You know, we get people from all around the world that come visit just this temporary space. And w when they come to the temporary space, it really gets them excited about the future museum. So it's it, it's really, it's really great. Hey, Capri, what are there things that you see going on in hip hop now that have surprised you as it's evolved and there's so many interpretations of it? Yeah, I mean, you know, listen, things are going to change. Things are going to change. Um, you either move with the change, you don't move with the change, you get stuck with the change. You like the change or don't like it, but it's going to change. Um, and, you know, I can't say I'm going to agree with everything, but, you know, I didn't agree with everything 20 years ago. I didn't agree with everything 30 years ago. So, but, but that's what it's about. It's about uh balance it's about you know you're not going to like everything in, in everything anyway so it's, it's it's the same thing as you put an album out people going to like certain songs more than they like the others it's, you know so with hip-hop it's diverse you have aggressive people you have people that you know they're trying to make it and you know um it's the street you know what i'm saying it's the street and it, it comes from the streets so you you know you never know what to expect in it but when something catches on, that's great. It goes in and it's a great thing for a lot of people. It creates opportunities for a lot of people. So, yeah, I, I like to see what's going on now. And like I said, I agree with a lot of things and certain things I don't, but who am I to judge? Rocky, what about, uh, Thank tell you. us about as you've been in this whole process, this more than a decade long process of putting the museum together, the power of hip hop to bring people together. Cause I think that's one of the greatest things about it too, aside from the the, the music itself. Well, I, I, I'm fortunate because I've seen hip hop from the very beginning all the way to where it is today. You know, so I've seen everyone from Cool Herc to A Boogie in the Hoodie. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the the power hasn't changed. As Kid Capri says, it's infectious. You know, it's it's a youth movement. You know, it's music that was created by black and brown teenagers. It continues to be created by black and brown teenagers. And yes, I other people as well, Asians and Caucasians and people from Pakistan and South America and Mexico. Everybody has embraced hip hop all around the world. So, you know, as long as the, the, the roots of hip hop remain true to the streets that it came from, it's always going to be around for generations to come. Chuck, yeah. what about that, the street credibility? Because we always hear arguments about that. That person's a studio gangster. They don't have any street cred. Do you, do you think that's as much a part of uh, an artist persona now as it was back in the day, in the early days? Uh, shoot, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, I think shoot. it's important. It's definitely Isn't that the important. first one you've had? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, phew. It's more important now than ever, I think, unfortunately. And I say that unfortunately, right? Because um, a lot of these kids um, that are coming out are being uh, challenged and, and, and forced to prove how gangster they really are. Uh, I think back in the day, if somebody said it and they looked right, you believed it, you know what I mean? And, and they might have been official, you know what I'm saying? But I don't think uh, when KRS-One made his first album, he had to go kill somebody. Uh, to show he was criminal minded or whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? So um, there's a lot of rappers now that are going into the system. They're actually, you know, guilty of doing things that once was just spoken on record. And we, we, we kind of have to maybe remind kids that, you know, it was started to get you out of the streets. It was started to get you out of 
the system. It was started to give you an opportunity when there wasn't an opportunity. So now they're getting opportunities and losing the opportunity to prove to anyone, whether it be the internet or the, their block or whoever, that they're real. It might sound cliche, but that's just how I see it right now. How do you feel, Kid Capri, as a, as a dad about the power of hip hop, like the true hip hop, you know, just to make, like Rocky said, make everybody feel better? Um, yeah, I have two daughters. Um, and, you know, I, I, I tell you this, um, it's hard. It, it, I worry sometimes, you know, I gotta, I gotta be honest. I worry about, you know, my kids. I worry about the children and stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I remember when telling somebody, you know, move, move your son, move your son. Your son's moving with a little while. I am moving. And not long after he was killed, um, you know, it, it's hard. It's, it, it, you know, it's different right now. It's hard. I, I can't really predict how it's going to go, but I know that right now, it, uh, what's going on in the world right now is just different. And it, I'm real concerned about how the kids are moving out there. What's going to happen? How's the streets going to be? Like, what, what's going to, what's going to be the next best, the, ne the next thing that we're going to be sitting here holding our head like, why did this happen? It's, you know, it's, it's a constant thing. And since the pandemic has been like that, seeing right. all the different entertainers, you know, passing away and, you know, all the gang violence going on. It's, it's you know, it's, it's a little crazy. But mm -hmm. we have music to try to keep our mind away from it, you know, and that's what, that's what holds us together. Chuck, is there a, is there a lesson the the American culture as a whole can learn from hip hop at this time, you think? Is there a lesson? I think you got to learn to respect people a little better, a little more. Yeah, right. um, I think that's uh, probably the underlying <laughs> thing. Basic, you know? but kind of missing, right? You you got to deal with us. You know what I mean, like it or not. And um, and you know, people of color have have gone through a lot in this in this country, and um, and yeah, I mean, I think respect is the only thing because I remember. You know, when when they were, I mean, they were going hard at hip hop, you know, and I, I, man, my heroes were strong. You know, the ones that I looked up to, like Ice T, Chuck D, and um, and many others, uh, Run DMC, you know, those guys were strong. And women too, Queen Latifah, Moni Love, right. and, and, and um, you know, and people Roxanne like that. Champagne. Yeah, they were built for this, and they really put the culture on their shoulders in a way that, a lot of people don't really want to assume that responsibility. So um, respect is, is everything. I remember Run DMC screaming, but give us respect. And then it would be like, boom, you know, and then the beat hit. And so we we still here for our respect. And I think um, on the business side, it's time for us to begin to make the inroads and and um, start to take control and, 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 and do it on that side. Uh, artistry, I mean, we got that kind of sewn up right now. I right. think the business and the other things, um, we have to make the mo the moves, the real moves. Rocky, then I, I want to end on a and end on a, on a positive note here. The 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 other thing too that I think as as, as we look from a historical, I'm I'm saying this as a, as a journalist, like looking at this from a historical perspective too. All of this, this tremendous movement came out of communities that were basically written off by the officials, like. If you called nine one one, no one came. You know what I'm saying? It's like if if, a, if you were a victim of a crime, the 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 re you know the school like the the entire infrastructure of the community, and yet this irrepressible energy and creativity uh, in these black and brown, predominantly black and brown communities, just the youth came together and uh, made it made it happen. So I'm I'm sure I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with the museum in terms of getting that part of the message out as well. And and thank you for being with us. Thank you. And I, I just want to say this as, as a carrot on, on this discussion. Think about the previous administrations here in New York City. You know, we, we had an administration and I don't want to name the mayor's name, but they had a police task force that was trying to crack down on hip hop. Right. And today we have a, a mayor that calls him himself the hip hop mayor. So. Right. A big change in attitude. And I really think that that's what we need in order to really address the underlying problems that we have in our communities.
Thanks for joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on Hip Hop's Bronx Roots. You can watch it again and share it on our Fox 5 NY YouTube page. Remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. I'm Lisa Evers. Let's push for peace, love, and justice for all.